And we'll take a brief look at what's called the haliform reaction. And, uh, and technically, it starts off with base catalyzed alpha halogenation. So here's the relevance here. And uh, in this case, we're going to do what's called exhaustive iodination here. We're going to have excess I2 and excess base. And every single one of these alpha hydrons on a methyl ketone, is, is specific for methyl ketones, uh, is going to get replaced by an iodine here. So that's the first part of this. So, And it turns out this carbon right here, no, normally carbon's not going to be a good leaving group, uh, but carbon attached to three halogens, uh, their electron withdrawing enough to stabilize it enough that it can leave and actually be a stabilized carbon ion. So not the most stable thing in the world, don't get me wrong, but it'll work. And so what we'll do is we'll just do nucleophilic acyl substitution here. So, which normally you can't do with a ketone, but with it being uh, three halogens on it, you can. And I'm not showing the whole mechanism here, so notice I've got a second arrow right here. But in this case, net result is we've replaced this big leaving group with an OH. So, and then there's your leaving group right there. And then this thing's simply just going to get protonated and turn into CH3I. Uh, and that's uh, a yellow solid right there, uh, precipitates out of the solution. Uh, and leaving you with a carboxylate here. And this used to be a test for methyl ketones. It used to be that, you know, you'd add excess iodine hydroxide, uh, and if you got a yellow precipitate, it meant you had a methyl ketone. And if you didn't get a yellow precipitate, you didn't have a methyl ketone. Uh, but that's kind of the deal. That's the haliform reaction.